today the moon snipper did land the lunar landing from japan making japan the fifth nation in the world to have actually landed on the moon today the 19th of january 2024 and now i'm going to tell you more <laughs> yes the first was the united states russia china india and now japan have landed on the moon this is uh a historic feat. It's not the first time that uh, Japan tried to land on the moon. Let's have a look at this. This is uh, this is from their live stream that played earlier today. As you might know, this is uh, <clears throat> the. Uh, let's see. Let's play it here. It turns out that uh, they've got an issue with the power supply. Now, please pay attention to. They're about to come the down. Watch it. PDM. We will soon change. Okay, BDM. So PDM will change into BDM. Moon Snipper is the nickname, by the way. Now, it's actually the, altitude five kilometers. The first is actually the Smart Lander investigating the moon. SLIM is the actual name. They call it Moon Snipper. Smart Lander for investigating the moon. It appeared to have landed successfully somewhat, but there's a power issue. Well, it's been changed to BDM. Now studying the vertical descent. It's coming down. This is showing the land that it occurred. <clears throat> It had carried two payloads with it, two other excursion vehicles. Lunar Excursion Vehicle 1, which is a small rover that's uh, supposed to hop is the west on the moon. Now, and there's also uh, LEV-2, which is the... Uh, that's it. Vertical about the size of a basketball, which is actually a little rover that's uh, opened up into like a little uh, cylinder that was supposed to roll around. So it landed shortly after 10 a.m. Eastern time this morning, or 1500 UTC. It came down or initially to speed around 700 meters per second. They tried to uh, control that landing with their retro rocket, but it had a complicated landing maneuver. I'm going to show you that a little bit. 500 meter, and it was the, the first hovering. Yeah, so it's firing or actually looking and scanning for a landing site. It's had some intelligent, artificial intelligence on it to try to pick a good landing site where there was no boulders, no rocks. That's why it's delaying there. Now, some think that the reason that uh, they has a power issues to solar rays aren't facing the sun because apparently it landed around 500 meter. It will start doing the first hovering. But apparently it flipped over. So it's landing was not apparently in the proper orientation, but it had a rather complex landing maneuver. Short time, but this is the first hovering. So that may explain what happened to it. So like I said, it had, it's got two small uh, excursion vehicles, that LEV-1, which is a small rover, which actually is a hopper. It starts to descend again. And next aim is 50 meters. And LEV-2. Now, supposedly they got signal from these rovers uh, that they were deployed, but uh, without power, they're not really able to discern a lot about what happened. So they had five crushable 3D printed aluminum plates, a lattice on the landing legs. We'll scan again to see if there are any obstacles or boulders. To help it you know, absorb the impact. Maybe they didn't crush correctly or who knows what, but apparently the thing rolled over so that the solar rays weren't facing the sun. The good news is now that on the moon, you know, you have about a 28-day day-night cycle, which means about 14 days of sunlight. So as the sun tracks across the moon, 
Okay. Maybe in a week or two. Okay. It'll get a little power and return some signal, maybe. Uh, they said the batteries that was on board were only good for a few hours. It's looking for a safe place to land. Looking for a safe place to land. So here we come. She's coming down. <clears throat> Heading for the ground. Around the chin beetles, it will release the lead. Like I said, this was the land. first landing attempt. They had a software issue on a previous lander known as the Hakaru RM1. That was not successful. They did get a landing on this now one. You see on the left hand side, MLM. That means it has landed. They have landed. From the telemetry, it shows a sign. In now they did lose a lot of telemetry here, as you can see. They had a signal issue. <laughs> so, stop the share. Hello. <laughs> Oh, let me stop the video from playing. From the telemetry, what we see is the swing has landed on this road. Oh, you can hear she, she said it has landed. <clears throat> anyway, uh, Hitachi uh, Funanaka, the head of the Institute of the Space and Aeronautical Science, said that they believe the, the uh, rovers were launched from the data that was transmitted back to Earth from SLIM, the smart lander for investigating the moon, or moon snippers, they called it. But uh, he said this, the uh, the uh, solar array and the batteries, uh, the solar array wasn't generating power and the battery life was relatively short. It's only a few hours. So uh, they weren't able to really get a lot out of it. There's still some investigation about it. It was a tense landing. Uh, so really, uh, they gave their press conference a couple of hours later after the landing because they were trying to assess what was going down. <clears throat> Uh, the SLIM was uh, trying to hit a small target about the size of a passenger vehicle, and they claim it was a pinpoint landing. Uh, I believe they call it the Sea of Nectar where it landed. <laughs> so, and, you know, it's kind of a, a poetic name for a place that you'd want to put something like that. Uh, let me do. Let me open up a website here, another site, so I can show you a little uh, on this vehicle. Before I do that, <clears throat> um, you can think of it. If this were the lander coming in, you know, they had the retro rockets over here. Oh, there's still coffee on this one. <laughs> and uh, it fired, and then it came down and fired the final uh, uh, firing to take out the velocity, but then they had a maneuver to flip it over. But the actual landing legs were on the side, not where the boosters were, which is a very unconventional way to land. Now, they wanted a surface that had a little bit of angular declination to it, just a little bit of a slope, like 10 degrees for this thing to land on. But yeah, just had something to do the whole way they blend. They they found what was apparently a suitable site for that. But apparently when it came down, it it flipped or something, uh, because it just didn't get power. At least that's a thought. Now we don't know that conclusively. That is what's been speculated as to what happened there. So we'll learn more about this maybe later, especially if the uh uh it gets power later on and are able to see things. I don't know how much the uh probably those little uh, lunar landers are, are dependent upon the main lander for data relay. <clears throat> uh, that's not uh, confirmed yet, but um, <clears throat> pardon me, guys. I'm going to show you what it should have looked like landing. Then I'm going to share screen. Bada bing. This is how it came down. I suppose the flipped over. You can see there's just uh, a little bit of a slope here that we're looking for because, you know, one set of legs is longer than the other. <clears throat> well, maybe. The actual landing site didn't have the right slope. That's a possibility right there. Uh, <clears throat> so we shall see. But whatever the case is, it did land. It was the uh, it was the uh, the uh, second attempt then made. But now Japan's become the fifth nation to have got a soft landing on the moon. Many uh, some few other countries have tried to land on the moon and didn't succeed and. Several that have done it had to take more than one attempt at it, like did uh, uh, India. 
but uh, eventually they did make it. <clears throat> so this uh, this lander uh, puts them in the history book. Now, of course, it's the fifth landing of a robotic vehicle. Only one nation to this date has landed people on the moon, uh, and nobody else has been able to duplicate that since. So in 1969, of course, the United States with the uh, Apollo 11. All right, guys. So um, uh, other news is the Peregrine uh, lunar lander, which didn't uh, achieve a, a lunar landing or didn't even try to land on the moon because they lost a lot of fuel. They had an onboard fuel leak, uh, did re-enter the Earth's atmosphere today. And on board was the remains of Gene Roddenberry, uh, Major Barrett Roddenberry, his wife, who was a computer in uh, uh, nurse uh, chapel in Star Trek. Uh, originally was slated, you know, he had hoped that she would have been like the captain <laughs> originally, but uh, that didn't happen. So uh, the network wouldn't go for having a, a woman captain back in uh, the early 60s. But, you know, you know, that's been done later on Star Trek, as we know. But um, I think uh, uh, th there were quite a few other remains of other individuals on there to include a hair from George Washington. But all that burned up in the Earth's atmosphere. They did get a ride through space. <laughs> Their remains did. And some of you may know that was very controversial because uh, there was a representative from the Navajo Nation tried to get NASA to stop that mission. And NASA said, this is not our mission. It's a private mission. Now, Celestis was a company that was uh, uh, set up the space burial system. They've been doing space burials uh, for uh, quite some time. Uh, I remember the, the representatives from Celestis coming to the International Space Development Conference of the National Space Society, you know, probably you know 10 or 15 years ago when I was quite involved in that, uh, promoting what they were planning to do. And indeed, they've done a, uh, a good number of space births. But the Navajo says, we don't want the moon to be a graveyard. The moon is sacred to us. Well, one little thing like this is not going to make the moon a graveyard. And by the way, the remains of uh, Eugene Shoemaker are already on the moon. Uh, he was the guy that uh, was investigating the cause of lunar craters and himself became a crater. As you might know, the uh, Levy Shoemaker 9 comet that hit Jupiter with 21 major fragments blowing up, uh, each one with fireballs as big as Earth upon impact with Jupiter uh, on the 25th anniversary, nonetheless, of, of the lunar landing. <laughs> uh, that's when that occurred, which is very interesting. But anyway, guys, so... The uh, situation is there's already remains on the moon. And in time, as we settle the moon, there will be a lot more in all probability. But, you know, do we consider the Earth a graveyard? How many people have been buried on Earth? Do, we, do, you, do they not consider the Earth sacred? Well, this is kind of interesting because, you know, I've got connections here in Huntsville, Alabama, <clears throat> where uh, the, a lot of space stuff originates. Uh, I think my buddy Tim Pickens worked with the astrobotics team for a while. I was also a member of a Lunar Google X Prize team known as Lunar Treks, which Astrobotics got its start as a Lunar Google X Prize team. And they survived past the, the expiration of that prize and <clears throat> managed to take a shot at the moon, <clears throat> but they hadn't got there yet. So like I said, they had a fuel leak and so they weren't able to fully execute that mission. But uh, nonetheless, that launched on a uh, Vulcan rocket. The uh, BE-4 engines are, you know, being developed here in, in the Huntsville area and built, uh, tested here. That is a Blue Origins uh, system. The engines were the Vulcans, a ULA vehicle, the United Launch Alliance. Their stuff is built over in Trinity next to Decatur, Alabama, real close to here. And that was a very successful launch, put the Peregrine on the right orbit. So uh, it did its job. And that is a new era in commercial space because there may be not quite a Falcon uh, class vehicle, Falcon 9 or whatever, but it's uh, uh, quite an advance in uh, the ELV community. Uh, and, you know, you don't want all your eggs in one basket. We had a time when all of our major launch vehicles back in the Reagan administration were grounded, every one of them, you know, the Titans, the Deltas, the Space Shuttle. Yeah, we went for a little bit without launch capabilities for various reasons. So it's important for national security and access to space that we have more than one player in the game. And the Department of Defense is, is very sensitive to that ever since then, especially. They had all their eggs in space shuttle basket for satellite launches, and uh, they discovered they didn't want to be that way. And besides that, they needed more launches than the space shuttle had been able to accomplish for them anyway back in the day. So it's important to have a capability like that. But, you know, I've got a connection here, but I also got a connection in a sense to the uh, 
Navajo community because I got property in Navajo County, Arizona, I'm planning to move to. <laughs> I'm building a little house, tiny home there right now. So, uh, you know, I understand their sensitivities, but, you know, like I said, the earth is sacred. What's more sacred than the, the home of life as we know it, the only home of life that we know of. And yet, you know, as part of living is dying. It's just part of it. And so, uh, and creatures have been dying here since there have been creatures living here. <laughs> So, so far, living is part of that. Maybe we'll figure out day, one way, one day to uh, change that paradigm a little bit, <laughs> at least extend life a little bit. But that's another story. So, my friends, uh, this is going to be an exciting year. A lot of things are heading to the moon. There's a whole lot of other landers, including Astrobotics is going to, uh, I think, make another uh, attempt later on. There's a lot of stuff heading for the moon. A lot of commercial landers are just going to try to land. So we'll see how this all works out. So we should have a lot to talk about here in the upcoming days, weeks, and months. And I do plan to bring you more content in the near future. <clears throat> Had a little bit of a hiatus because I've been busy out in the desert and some other things. And But I will try to put more stuff on because there's a lot happening in space. So just hang on. Subscribe to this channel if you've not already done it. Bang the update notification bell and click all so you can get notifications of the videos as they come out. With that, I'm going to say thank you for watching. Greg out.